Uh, if you stare into a light too long, you turn into a zombie. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about King of the Zombies. Let's talk about King of the Zombies. On a spooky island, three stranded travelers find an evil doctor working with foreign spies and in control of zombies. In 1941, Monogram Pictures, which is a small company that also produces Charlie Chan movies, Charlie right? Charlie Chan. Absolutely. Which I haven't seen a lot of their movies, so I was, I, I've was i seen the Charlie Chan stuff, but I haven't seen anything else. I have seen stuff. So- I have seen so many Monarch films. Monogram pictures. I can't even tell you. But Moreland Maitland. Manton Moreland. Moreland who? Um, I have seen a lot of Moreland Maitland. Manton Moreland. Films. He's in probably a quarter of the uh, Charlie Chan movies. Um, and, and, uh, and he was a star was... in films. Wait, Moreland Maitland. I'm still worried about his name here. Manton Moreland? What's his name? Isn't I have it, it down here. Moreland. His last name's Moreland. Oh, I'm sorry. Maitland Moreland. Manton Moreland? Yeah, Maitland Moreland. Sorry. Manton Moreland? Otherwise uh, known as Manton Moreland. Manton. <laughs> I knew something was off there. Anyway. He, he is the funniest guy. I, I, I mean, I... I well, not just he that. Shows, he's not just what? funny. He's not just funny. He's actually a great actor he who's given a, a load actor. of for a script, and he made oh. it excellent somehow. How did he do oh that? Oh, my God. <laughs> the thing is, is this is what this guy has done in so many movies. Every – you just can't – I can't even begin to give you an idea of how many films this guy has been in. And uh, and he's he's black and he has this this great buggy eye look. Yeah, the Don Knotts uh, look. Yeah, it, which it, I can't it, do, but <laughs> it, it's absolutely it has a Don Knotts look. And and in this film, uh, in particular, uh, he's carrying he's carrying this film. Yeah, which amazes right? me because if you if you listen to the script, like if I read this script, I'd be like, okay, so they want anybody who's not white to sound like a total idiot, right? It's a racial stereotypes, but somehow. He becomes Somehow, the best in the whole movie. He's the best one. All the white actors the look like. That's why. And, and, and the thing is, is standing right next to it is uh, is a woman. I, I can't. What is her name? The 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 woman that uh, plays his foil in the film. Oh, uh, you're talking about Marguerite Witten. She played Samantha. Right. I think? Right. Yeah. Those two not only go through this film but they they are a, an act that, that goes through many 30s and 40s films uh well i looked up her resume on imdb and there's only four films listed i'm like she has to be in more movies than uh, that. She is. and then it just suddenly ends at 1942 or something it's just like eh, that's I, it. I think that she was because i i just remember her on, on a uh it, she kind of plays his foil um he was part of a comedy routine and i can't remember the name of it but uh it he he does a routine that that you've seen often if you look at the charlie chan films uh he does a uh it's it's where he and another uh ben carter ben carter he and ben carter don't ever finish their sentence <laughs> And it's hilarious. They don't ever it, finish it, the sentence, and I just finished your sentence. That's what's weird about that. <laughs> yeah, I, you did right. That's exactly. They, only they do. When they do it, it's funny. Well, there's okay. So I see Ben Carter was his partner, but also there's a Nipsey Russell partnership too, as well. It sounds like that was, but later that was late on. in the fifties, right? Yeah, late in the fifties, uh, he, he actually did uh, uh, routines with Nip, Nipsey Russell. And they uh, worked on through into the early '60s, I think. Right? Wow. Yeah, I see a lot of Ben Carter though. I have to watch. The, I have to watch some of those because I haven't really seen many of Man- Manson Moreland stuff. So. Oh well, you should follow follow him because some of his. Cause Is he on he, Facebook? He's... <laughs> oh my god. Uh, now, he goes. He goes through uh, quite. Uh, well, he's in a I lot mean, of Charlie if you're Chan, looking at his IMDb, Chan, right? he is in so many different films. You know, it, it's it's got to be like for a career, he's got to have like been into like 60, 70 films, right? 
Well, he's in a lot of Charlie Chan. There's a ton of Charlie Chan, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he was in like a quarter of the Charlie Chans, but he also had lots of films that were done that that were just black people. Mm -hmm. That that he he was a lead in a lot of those. Uh, there was a lot of films that just used him and Ben Cartwright as comic relief. Ben Carter. Uh, well, one thing I like about this is that it actually was done in 1941. Yeah, 1941. Right. And he was listed on the credits as a lead actor, which I... Right, as a lead actor. Which was yeah, amazing. No, he's the, he, uh, who's the uh, main person on this? Is uh... Oh, there's Dick Purcell. I think Dick, he's like Dick the main Purcell. guy. Dick Purcell. Well, he was didn't like, look very good on this. I mean, yeah, I, I, I know. I, I did, neither one of those two guys. Uh, they did. They certainly didn't do very well. And, and then and, Henry and, Victor, and, the doctor. And, and and I think that it was pretty obvious that they were just setting Maitland up. Manton. For <laughs> oh, he was terrible. Oh, the guy that played Bill. Yeah, that's uh, John Archer. Oh, he's yeah, the guy that played yeah. Bill. And I think yeah. he was the weakest one. And I kept thinking of Saturday Night Live. You know that Saturday Night Live skit from the 80s? Uh, oh, no, Mr. Bill. <laughs> Every yeah. time I heard him say Mr. Bill, I, I kept thinking of Mr. Bill in my head. Anyway, it kind of ruined uh, it for me. But uh, No, I like the fact that uh, just the timing of this was interesting. And the fact that they, uh, I mean, this is low budget. It seems like this company, this studio was very... Was it progressive for the age and probably didn't give it to other people who were black or white and they all work together seemed like i just got well, that vibe from this it, but but monarch also did uh a lot of uh what were called race films monogram pictures okay so they were completely race <laughs> yeah com yeah completely black films uh right a, a, as opposed to this one which you know which is diff him, totally and, different than this yes so yeah, no, this is a, a monarch monogram pictures was one of the uh, was monogram like the, <laughs> mo monogram Ben uh, Cartwright Ben Carter monogram <laughs> right uh, uh, I'm also watching I am also watching the Apple film Monarch oh okay the, uh, TV series is that good uh, Monsters I have oh, yeah it's, great. <laughs> it's amazing so. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. No, I, I, I. This film has absolutely nothing going for it except for him. <laughs> well, actually, well, yeah, right. If, he's the only one that held it together. But I think that this was actually nominated for an Oscar, which I was amazed by. It, but best score, best, best original score in a, in a dramatic film. It didn't really? win, but it was nominated. Oh and, wow, that's amazing. Which I thought was amazing. Uh, oh, another piece of trivia that I found was that. The part of the doctor was designed for Bella, Bella Lugosi, but he was unavailable, so they tried to get Peter Lorre, and they ended up with Henry Victor. Henry <laughs> Victor. <laughs> so how awesome yeah, would this have been has, if Bella Lugosi was in it? How, that, that would have been a totally yeah, different movie. that would have been great, because, because he's a little... <laughs> yeah, kind of... Uh, yeah, the bad guy on this, you don't kind of give much of a hoot about him. Yeah, well, uh, I th well, I, one thing I thought was interesting too was that this was like two years after Hitler kind of became a issue, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is the, but you notice the doctor. There was like a German thing going on. He had a German accent. He kept talking exactly. about uh, he was paranoid about people being in the secret service. Uh, he was doing all these creepy experiments on people. He was fascinated with religious artifacts. What else was he doing? He was. Uh, he, they kept referencing like without referencing it, it Germany, <laughs> and this I actually know. came out right before like, Pearl Harbor. It was, yeah, this was like Hitler light. <laughs> yeah, well, this is before Pearl Harbor, so I found that interesting that it was kind of on their minds when they filmed this, like, obviously. Yeah, yeah. well, it, you have to remember that there was a Jew there was a strong Jewish contingent in in Hollywood, and uh, and the people in Hollywood knew what was going on. Right. Well, you I know, think they, I mean, uh, wasn't the Hitler, what was that movie, The Beast of Berlin? Yeah. Um, 1939, I think that was like a movie that a German producer tried to make, and I guess oh, it yeah. got squashed by the German right. censorship right. board or whatever. Right. Well, but I think just, that was affected. I think they knew about that, obviously, because they might have been Jewish themselves, and they probably were aware of it. What was? Wh when did the film come out with Charlie Chaplin uh, balancing the earth on his... Uh... Oh, you're talking about... <laughs> I think that wasn't that after the war. That was like later. Um, was, that after the, was that after the war? Modern Times, was it? Modern oh, Times? Was that Modern Times? 
<laughs> no, the dictator. Duh. The dictator, right. <laughs> what, what year was that? That's obvious, isn't it? Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, it was in 2012. <laughs> that was the one with Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> no, it did. Right, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, the Great Dictator, 1940. Okay, so... That so was a I'm, year before this came out. Yeah, so 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 it's like these weren't secrets. So everybody you know, was aware of Hitler. I didn't know how aware people of <laughs> people were of Hitler back in the forty in early nineteen forty or forty one. But well, I, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. We won't get we, we won't get into that. No, but it's just it was just kind of it was, it was just kind of in there subtly. Yeah, it was subtly, but not so was, subtly. It, it was it was definitely it was it was definitely Hitler was writing subtext. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I I and and here's another thing. I have to tell you the truth. When this film came up, I thought, oh my god, I have to watch that again. <laughs> I have watched. <laughs> I I am such a fan of uh, of uh, the uh, monogram pictures and uh and so much of uh of the secondary films uh b b b films that that came out back then um and you have to get when you watch these though (laughs) you have to get over the fact (laughs) that there were a lot of really bad racial stereotypes back then especially with charlie charlie chan well, you I know mean, what? somebody can watch it and get totally offended if they don't realize that it's a different time, obviously, and people think differently now. But the movies but, are still good movies. But not only that, Charlie Chan was trying to do something really specific. Charlie Chan was trying to take the curse off of. Right. Uh, there, there was a the Fu Manchu. Yes, uh, films, yes, Fu Manchu. Which, yes. which, which kind of uh, cast uh, people that the Chinese people that became our allies, right? Put them in a very bad light. Uh, you know, they were as racist as you can possibly imagine. And then, and then as a solution to that, the, the Charlie Chan films came out. And the thing about the Charlie Chan films is that they were created specifically to give the, uh, uh, uh Asian people a, a boost uh, because we were dealing with so many Asian people that we were trying to very hard to separate the Japanese from the Chinese. That was what, that was what it was intended to do. And at the same time, then you, you have to realize that, that they're Hawaiian. <laughs> well, wasn't this like, wasn't it Charlie Chan though? Wasn't that like a radio show originally like in the thirties, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It's been around. It was a long time that it, Charlie Chan was around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is like Charlie Chan in some ways because, you know, this is a comedy horror movie, but that was Charlie Chan is kind of a comedy mystery comedy solving Comedy mystery thing. movies, yeah. Yes, right. which I right. love that, but I haven't really watched much of it. My dad used give, to watch Charlie Chan and listen to the radio I shows. Give, I will give you a list and we will... Uh, we'll do it. We'll do like three of them for one <laughs> because they're very short. We'll do three of them for one uh, one episode of uh, uh, of Dream Warrior Review. How about that? That sounds good. Um, anyway, I I love this movie. Uh, I love it because of Maitland. Um, uh, the rest of it, uh, you know, how it's written and so forth. The, you know, the timing is interesting and so forth. But uh, I think I think that there is something about. Um, um youtube right now youtube has got some kind of uh optical thing going that they have cleaned up these films no i noticed that yeah yeah That's, no i totally noticed a, that it's got to be ai of course i watched this on uh amazon prime but i've have noticed that on other things like I, that harold lloyd saying... movie that harold not harold lloyd uh yeah actually there's a harold lloyd movie called sleep uh speedy or something but there's also a yeah. uh the comedy group Laurel and Hardy. So right. all this stuff and came into public so... domain. I looked up right. the movie that came into public domain. Something like and... "Should Husbands Come Home?" If you've seen that movie, right. I found it and on YouTube, this... and it was crystal clear. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is is the weird thing is I've been trying to find out some information about what kind of AI program they've been running. Right. That that has cleaned up so many black and white films, and I'm not kidding. It hasn't been out there for more than a year and a half. Yeah, because a year and a half ago, you would look at one of those films and it would look eh, scratchy and and like it sound would be horrible. But, yeah. but now the sound is amazing. The uh, the the 
the picture of it, and I have to recommend to everybody. You know, uh, if, if you want to see an old film, and you want, and you, and you thought to yourself, "Oh yeah, but I can't understand that on the sound is terrible," and the look, watch it on YouTube because YouTube has got something that's cleaning them up that makes them look so good. Yeah, totally. Well, so what? What would you rate this one? <laughs> oh, you, you know. Uh, it's, it's hard for me to talk about it because I feel like it had no plot, really. It just kind of trudged no, along, it, and then all of a sudden it just kind of ends. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really boring but, movie, but it's it, only an hour, so. It, it, right. It's an, You know what? It's an hour long. Uh, if nothing else, you get to watch Maitland. There's no and interesting Maitland, characters except for Moreland, yeah. Mor- uh, it, it, Manton it, Moreland. He's the only one that's interesting. He is the only <laughs> well, one actually, the lady... His lady and, friend was nice. She was yeah, awesome. yeah. I I have to tell you something. Those two, and here's the thing, is to me, that makes it uh, worth watching. I I, I mean, uh, I I love his stuff. Uh, I have I have like gone out to search some of his uh, other old films and stuff, and uh, and I would love to bring some of those films out to somebody who's never seen them because he actually is a little treasure. Yeah. No. Totally. I. I could see it now, but I wonder. I wonder what this would have been if it was Bella Lugosi and it had a really big budget. Yeah, <laughs> it would have been amazing. Yeah, probably well, and a better uh, screenwriter. But I was gonna say it would need it would have needed a little bit more story. <laughs> a little more story. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I want to go for a a, a a three point nine because it is one of my favorites uh, uh, to watch just for him. See, I give it a three point five because without him, I would probably give it a one. <laughs> So, oh yeah without him it would be nothing you know so uh, Nick 3.5 but if it had bella lugosi probably would be 4.5 i don't know you're making films in your mind i am i do it all the time it's called daydreaming <laughs> he was a day <laughs> isn't that day tripper yeah <laughs> one way ticket yeah <laughs> i know my beatles anyway <laughs> Ha 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 ha!